Hi everyone, thanks for joining me this week. This is the fourth and final part of Prayers That Change the World with me, Pastor Annie Dillner. And uh, if this is your fourth time of watching uh, this series on prayer and fasting, you're really hardcore. Well done as we enter the fourth week. Or if this is your first time uh, watching uh, this short session on prayer and fasting and uh, looking at prayers that change the world, I give you a warm welcome. Well, I'm really praying that you're doing good, that you're keeping safe and that you are really enjoying a time with God, your saviour. And I'm praying that your fasting's going well. And uh, We're just rejoicing that we've reopened our Sunday morning service. Uh, we've got two services at 9.30 and 11.30. And if you've not booked in yet for this Sunday, can I encourage you, get booked on and uh, please come and join us. We have to book on so we can have social distancing, uh, but, we, but God's still with us and we had a wonderful time last week. So please book on. Uh, before we look at today's prayer, I want to read uh, some quotes about prayer from uh, one of my heroes, which was Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said these things about prayer. We can change the course of events if we go to our knees in believing prayer. Wow, we can change the course of events if we go to our knees with believing and faith-filled prayer. Wow, and if Billy Graham said that, then I'm going to believe that too. This is what he said as well. The Christian life is not a constant high. I have moments of deep discouragement. Wow, this is even Billy Graham saying this. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, Oh God, forgive me or Oh God, help me. Then the last prayer quote that he says, Should we not pray for God? We should not pray for God to be on our side, but pray that we will be on God's side. And that's why it's so important that we've had a season in New Horizon Church of praying and fasting, that we may seek God as a church and that God would speak to you in your life. And so we're going to look at another prayer, the final prayer. There's many different prayers in the Bible. We're going to look at the final prayer that changed the world in this series. And if you've got a Bible or if it's on your phone, please turn to John's Gospel chapter 17 and uh, we're going to look like we've done through this series we're going to look at the context of the prayer we're going to look at the prayer itself and then we're going to look at seven prayer points for the next seven days and I'm really going to try and make it a little bit shorter uh, than the last one that I did because uh, yeah I hope you got a lot out of that and I'm really praying that you've got a lot out of these uh, series and so we're going to look at the prayer in John's Gospel chapter 17 and it's an important prayer because this is the prayer of Jesus and really it's interesting if we're Christians that we ask questions about people's prayer life and in these verses and in this context we really get to know the heart of Jesus and we get really get to know what was on his heart and on his mind and we really get to know what he prayed about. And the context of this prayer is that Jesus is coming to the end of his earthly ministry and he's coming to the end of his earthly life. And this is just before Jesus is arrested and we know that Jesus is going to be arrested and he knows and he's thinking and he's reflecting on his earthly life and on his earthly ministry and he's also thinking forward to what lies ahead and uh, the um, uh, disownment of Jesus, the arrest of Jesus, the betrayal of Jesus and also the crucifixion of Jesus but also the resurrection of Jesus. And when you read this prayer you really get a sense that Jesus is knows his time's coming to an end. And whenever you hear what people have to say when their time's coming into an end, you normally 
get to hear what they value the most and what's really on their heart. And, uh, and so this is the prayer that Jesus prayed uh, as he's contemplating and reflecting, but also thinking forward about what lies ahead. And uh, maybe in your life, you're thinking through what you've been through in your life. Maybe during this series, God's put a spotlight on areas where you've journeyed through and it's kind of left residue or it's left some areas of difficulty and you've had to pray God's intervention and forgiveness and blessing in that area. But also Jesus is reflecting on his life, but also he's thinking about what lies ahead. And maybe in your life right now, you are thinking about what lies ahead for your life. And I know if your hand is in the hand of Jesus and you've put your faith and trust in him, then God has got a great future for you of doing his will and being about a great purpose in the earth and an adventure with God. And until one day when we uh, end our earthly life, we receive eternal life when we go to heaven. The Bible says that's the joy set for, before all believers. Uh, or whether like we believe here at New Horizon, whether we're still here uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And so we're going to read now the prayer. And if you want to turn with it to John chapter 17. And it says this, and this is what he prays. And stay with me, it's quite long. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. Father, the time has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life. Wow, these are profound words. To all those who have been given him. Now this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Wow. I have revealed you to those you gave me out of this world. And so Jesus now is praying for his disciples. They were yours. You gave them to me and they obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. Hallelujah. Jesus is praying for us, for me and you. This is incredible. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. Talking about his death on a cross. But they are still in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your power, by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. It's a power in the name of Jesus, church. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. So the scripture would be fulfilled. And he's talking about Jesus, uh, uh, Judas who betrays him. I am coming to you now 
But I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world, the word, sorry, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would protect them from the evil one. Come on, God's praying protection over our lives. It's going to change our lives today in 2020. They are not of the world as I am not of it. Not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Hallelujah. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. We've been sent. We're not of the world, church, but we've been sent into the world to let all heaven break loose. For them, I have sanctified myself that they too may be truly sanctified stay with me it's a great prayer then he goes on Jesus prays for all believers my prayer is not for them alone I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message now Jesus is praying for the church right now the, the birth of the church of Jesus Christ didn't start until uh, the book of Acts but before anything starts, Jesus is praying. You've got to pray before you want anything to start. Jesus is praying for the church. That all of them may be one. So he's praying that, in, that, through, that they will believe in Jesus through their message, the disciples' message, and that they will be one. Father, just as you are in me and I in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. Wow. That they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and I've loved them as I have, as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. Wow. Jesus is praying that one day we're going to be with him where he is in glory. Wow. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus is praying for your salvation. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that I, that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. What an incredible prayer. And, and I really want you to, it's a long prayer. I would call it a prayer of high Christology. It's talking about God and Jesus being God. And it's full of theology. I really want you to encourage you to uh, read it over and over again. Because that's the heart of Jesus and the prayer of Jesus. And so we're going to look for seven quick prayer points for the next seven days from these words of Jesus. The prayer of Jesus. And so the first prayer point is this. I really want you to pray this week is... We pray for the church in our lives that we will be a knowledgeable church and that you will be a knowledgeable person. It says in those early verses, it says, now this 
is eternal life. That they know you. That they know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ who you have sent. And it's really important in our lives that we know God. Not knowledgeable to say, oh, we know all the answers. and uh, But actually, we won't just know who Jesus is. But we'll also know what Jesus is like. And maybe in your prayer, you might want to say, God, I want to know more about you. Help me get to know you more. God, reveal your character to me. Reveal your heart to me. Impart your Holy Spirit into my life and fill my life with your Holy Spirit that I may know you more. You know, one of the words to describe our world right now is confused. And, uh, you know, Jesus here is bringing very good clarity to any confusion, confusion that he's saying that let them know who the one and true God is. And that Jesus Christ was the saviour of the world. And so let's pray that we will be more knowledgeable about God and that we would know his ways and his plan and his purpose and his character and his heart more in our lives. But also pray for the world on this day that the world will know if people are confused by religion, confused by different things, that they will come to the knowledge that there's only one true living God. This is what the Bible teaches and uh, people are, uh, we should respect people if they believe different. But the Bible teaches that the one and true living God and that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. So let's be a knowledge, knowledgeable people, sorry, and a knowledgeable church. The second prayer point for the second day is that we will be a believing people or that you will be a believing person that we will have the faith to accept God's word over our lives in verse 8 he prays for I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them wow so Jesus saying I spoke the word and I told them how to live and I shared your word to them and they faithfully and they had to have a lot of belief and faith that they accepted your word and let's pray in our own lives because sometimes God's word can be contrary to how we think sometimes obeying God's word in our lives can be a challenge that's why it's faith and just thinking of Peter on that boat and when Jesus said, come to me. And obviously Jesus, between Jesus and Peter, there was a lot of water. And sometimes when we accept and obey God's word, we feel like, you know, it's walking on water. It shouldn't work. But we know that if we believe it, it does work and we've got our faith. So when Jesus talks about finance, when he talks about relationships, when he talks about how we should live, it's very contrary to the message, what the world's saying. But the good news is that the disciples, he says that, that they accepted, they accepted my word and believed in them. And maybe there's certain areas in your life where you're finding it hard to believe and accept God's word. You look in and you see in the water and you know God's told you to walk on the water, but inside you're still very hesitant. And so maybe you need to pray and say, God, any areas of doubt in my life, any areas that I'm struggling to believe in you, God, help me with my faith that I will be a believing person. And, and regarding his church, that the church of Jesus Christ here at New Horizon and further afield will believe more in the word of God. And in some cases will be all out of the boat because Peter didn't walk on water. What Peter was actually walking on was God's word. 
And, uh, you know, that's why, you know, the, the Bible says God's word are flawless. It's flawless. It's perfect. It never fails. And maybe you need to pray, say, God, make me a more believing person, a more faith filled person. The areas of doubt and areas that I can't manage to get there in my faith. Help me on my journey to be a bit more of a believing person. And the third prayer point for the third day is that we will be a protected church and that God will protect you and your family and the people that you love. He says later on in the prayer, he says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me. And then later in verse 15, he says, Jesus says, my prayer is not that you would take them out of this world, but you will protect them from the evil one. And we really need to spend time in our lives um, that God would protect the church. You know, the enemy hates the church. You need to understand the battle that we're in because darkness wants to take over the world but the church is, the through Jesus living inside of us, is the light of the world. It's the hope of the world. It's the salt of the world. And the devil's going to attack the church. And so I really, on this third day, I want you to pray for the church. Pray for the leaders and the staff. Pray for their health. Pray for their families. Pray God's protection over the life group leaders. Pray God's protection over the church, the church building. The, just all the things, the youth, the children, the elderly, pray that God would protect the church, that the church will continue to flourish. Pray for finance for the church, that we'll have enough resources to do amazing things. Excuse me, so pray, because we know the enemy will try and attack the church. Also, on this day, the third day, pray not just to protect New Horizon Church, but pray for the national and global church. The church, men and women who believe in Jesus, pray for the persecuted church. You know, there's some people in the world right now who are Christians and they're in prison and they're faced injustice simply because they are Christians. Some people... It's against the law to have a Bible, to read a Bible, to attend a church. And so they have to have a difficult life being a Christian. Some people who have become a Christian in some families in the world, their family has disowned them. Which is so sad. They have lost their jobs. They've lost their houses. And so pray for those people in the world that God would protect the Christians in the world that's been persecuted. If you're interested in this subject, there's a great organisation called uh, the Barnabas Project. Project, and it's uh, you can. There's a website called the Barnabas Fund. Org, and if you're interested in how we can help the persecuted church in our world, then I want to signpost you to that website. They do amazing work that brings help and support to the people who have really suffered for the name of Jesus. And so please pray that God would protect his church. If Jesus prayed for God to protect the church, then we need to pray that God would protect the church from the evil one. On the fourth day, I'm going to pray, I believe that we need to pray that we'll be a joyous church, a joyful people. You know, a few weeks back, we actually prayed about joy. And when I wrote this prayer point, I thought, oh, not joy again. But actually, I really sense God wanted to say no. Actually, on this day, pray for joy again. Because I really sense God wants to fill your heart with joy. In verse 13, Jesus says, I am coming to you now. But I say these things why I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. That there'll be something within our hearts 
that will be full of joy. And maybe again, you've had a difficult life, you've had a difficult week, maybe work's been difficult, maybe ill health, and sometimes it's hard to find that joy. But I, we need to pray, say, God, fill me with your joy. You see, the difference between happiness and joy is this. Happiness merely pleases a person, while joy warms the heart of a person. And I'm praying, let's pray that even though we may have difficulties, there will be a, a warmth in our heart for God that is filled with joy. And pray for joy. That joy that's lasting. And so, you know, I believe God wants a joyous church. That Jesus prayed that the church would be full of joy. And so, maybe you need to say, God, come on, fill me with your joy. And I believe that in your heart and in your spirit, God will touch you. And uh, that, yes, let's be full of joy and praise. On the fifth day, the prayer point is that let's pray for that you'll be a holy person, a holy person, and that the church will be a holy people. That the church will be different in this world. In verse 19, Jesus prays, For them I sanctify myself so that, so that they too will be sanctified well sanctified is a bit of a um old-fashioned word what does it mean so sanctified means to be holy and to be set apart for a special purpose and let's pray for our lives say god in my life help me through your Holy Spirit working inside me to be different and to be holy. Jesus says in the Bible, be holy for I am holy. And sometimes it's difficult to be holy in a world, in a very unholy world. But Jesus prays that the church will be sanctified, that the church will be different, that the church will be set apart for him. And let's pray that over our lives. And maybe during this day, you need to say, God, sanctify or set apart or make holy my attitude. Sanctify and make holy uh, my mind and my thought process and my imagination. God, sanctify and make holy uh, my eyes. God, sanctify and make holy my tongue and what I talk about, that I don't gossip and I don't pull people down. Or with my eyes, I don't look upon anything that's not uh, pleasing to you. God, sanctify parts of my life, that when people see me, I will live different to the way the world lives, that I will come closer to you. And that I will live set apart for you. And if Jesus prays that we'll be sanctified, let's pray for our lives that we will be sanctified. When we live holy, it's powerful because John Wesley once said this. Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and a desire, uh, sorry, and desire nothing but God. And I care not a straw whether they are clergymen or laymen. Such alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. Wow. Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and a desire and desire nothing but God. And I care not a straw whether they are, they are clergymen or laymen. Such alone, such people like this will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. Wow. Let's pray we're different and that we're sanctified. 
The sixth prayer point for the sixth day is that we will be a united church. Wow. Jesus prays it three times and really focuses on this. He says, I pray for those who will believe in me through their message, through the apostles' message, that all of them may be one. Unity of the church is so, so important. And maybe you need to pray for New Horizon Church, also for the National Church and the World Church, that there'll be unity and that people will love one another and uh, that the devil will try and come into a church and divide it and separate people and bring gossip and malice and hate and jealousy. But we've got to be careful. We need to pray for unity. And the only way that we can make sure that there's no division, that there's no bitterness, that there's no jealousy, that there's no malice, just pray for our own lives and pray for every Christian at New Horizon and in the church in the world. Just pray that pray for love will be in the culture. Pray that we'll have a culture of forgiveness. Pray that we'll have a culture of grace. Pray we'll have a culture of humility. Pray we'll have a culture of gentleness. Pray we'll have a culture of wisdom. And pray we'll have a culture of kindness. Pray for unity, please. Because in Psalm 133... Uh, it's a very famous verse, but it says this, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. God calls us to live in unity with one another. That we unite together with love and we unite around Jesus. And later on, it says in those verses, for where the for where that is where the Lord bestows his blessing um, and that, so if there's uni where there's unity where there's unity in a church God that's where God places his blessing uh, you know a united small church is a lot more powerful and a lot more productive than a large divided church and so that is why when the enemy comes to attack the church it attacks its unity and wants to bring bitterness and malice and strife and gossip and all these things. And we need to make sure that we contribute in. We need to pray that we contribute unity and humility and love in the culture of the church. And that God would protect the unity of New Horizon Church. And then the seventh and final day prayer point. Uh, on this series is it's a good one to end with what Jesus prays is that we will be a loving people and that we will be a loving church in verse 20, uh, 26 Jesus says I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that you that the love you have for me will be in them god is praying sorry jesus is praying that the church of jesus christ that people who call themselves christians will be loving people that we will love god we will love our neighbors we'll love our friends and we'll love one another and maybe you need to pray to say, God, help me to be more of a loving person. Maybe you've loved somebody in your life and it didn't work out and you've suffered a broken heart. Which a wall can go up and it can prevent us from ever actually loving anything. Which then we lose God ministering to our hearts and a close re relationship with people. And so pray that you'll be a loving person, a kind person, that God will continue. I know I need to pray that God will continue to mould 
our hearts, that the church will be full of love, not for the sin of the world. We don't love the sin of the world, but we love the people of the world because God loves every single person in the world. Every single person. And pray that we will be a loving church and that the love for God and his will and who he is will be first in our, in our hearts. Can I just encourage you that every day that you live, I try and do this every day, whether it's in the car or in my office, I say every day, Jesus, I love you. And I try and say it to my wife every day and I try and say it to my uh, two sons, Timothy and James, because when I say I love you to Jesus, it does something in my heart. It takes me right back for, and it sets me up for the day. Everything I do flows from that love. And uh, I love Jesus. And even if you're not that kind of emotional person, can I just say right now, or when you finish watching this, just tell Jesus that you love him. It doesn't have to be posh, it doesn't have to be long. Just say, Jesus, I love you. And so that is the final prayer point for the final day. And so that is it. Well done. That was the final part of prayers that changed the world with me, Pastor Annie Dillnock. You're always welcome to join us at New Horizon Church anytime. I would love to see you. Remember, after listening to this message, just spend some quiet time with God. Read the verse over and over again and see what God speaks to you about. But remember in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9, if you seek him, and that's what we're doing. If you seek him, you will find him. Thanks for joining with me on this wonderful series, Prayers That Change the World. And let's pray that your world will change. And let's pray that our community and our world will change for the glory and honour of Jesus Christ. God bless. See you soon.